Masterclass Part 2 with Bernadette McClelland. She's the CEO of the Three Red Folders, a company who are helping businesses all over the world to create sales smart cultures. Their vision is for all SME businesses to willingly embrace the psychology, science and strategies which are necessary for sustainable growth. Bernadette herself helps businesses to tap into their roles and responsibilities, their outcomes and strategies, and the psychology and science behind how they will get there. Earlier, we had a good chat and hosted another masterclass on how to sell remotely when nobody wants to see you. So this morning, we're going to focus on the psychology behind selling. Good morning, Bernadette. You're very welcome back. Thank you, Elaine. Great to be back. So I think that a lot of, you know, maybe sales teams and sales people are finding themselves in maybe an awkward position or situation right now due to the current environment. And I think psychology and how we think or how we perceive things around us to be has a huge impact on that. So I think this morning's topic on the psychology behind selling is very important because no matter what role you're in, there is some sales element involved, whether it's selling your ideas, selling your product, you know, whatever. So every business person, I think, in effect, is in some element of a sales role. So it's going to be so relevant across the board, Bernadette. Uh, definitely. Um, you know, and the, the interesting thing is nobody when they were growing up put their hand up and said, oh, I want to be a salesperson when I get older. You know, ballerinas and astronauts maybe, but nobody put their hand up and said they wanted to be a salesperson. You know, so we're now in this situation where, um, you know, at the end of every month we start again and we go back to zero and, you know, we've got this pressure on us to get business when um, in, in reality, in some instances, there there is not a lot of business to be got, um, and in the in the interim. So how you know how do we cope? Um, but it's not just so much how do we cope in an environment like that. It's also peeling back, um, peeling back. You know what we refer to as the sales DNA, and and that sales DNA um, takes its shape in, I guess it manifests itself in, in a couple of different ways. Um, and, and if we consider that one of the biggest um, chokeholds or, or one of the biggest sabotaging behaviors um, is not necessarily fear of rejection. It is um, it, this need for approval mm -hmm. and it's this need to be liked. And as human beings, we all have this, you know, you're a mum, I'm a mum. Um, and we know that, you know, there's the, the hormone or the chemical oxytocin, which is the, the love drug. And, uh, and as, as our children, you know, come out of, um, go into toddlerhood, you know, everything they did in that first year of their life, we loved and it didn't matter what it was that they did, how gross it was, we loved it. Um, and then, you know, we start to discipline them. Mm -hmm. And it's that's the beginning where, you know, some little toddlers will try to get mum's attention in any way, shape or form. We go to school, we've got, you know, the cool kids at school, we go become teenagers, we've got peer pressure, uh, then we become adults and we become salespeople. <laughs> so we do, we all have, or business people who sell. So we all have this inbuilt need for approval um, and it's part and parcel of us. Um, where it comes unstuck is when we're in a business situation and we allow that need to be liked to run us to rule us and as a result of that it will stop us from asking what some people call the hard questions um you know it will it will prevent us from picking up the phone it will prevent us from showing up as somebody who is selling something um, you know, so when we start to peel that back and we start to realize that from a, a you know, from a biological perspective, we, we have this need for approval, how can we shift it? Um, and so, you know, when, when, I, when I work with people, um, I get them to do a very simple exercise. You know, they, they acknowledge the fact that, yeah, that is me. I don't want people to see me as a salesperson. You know, I, I want them, I don't want to, you know, uh, is to change the word like. You know, I want to be liked by them. I hope they like me. I hope, you know, I want you to change that word liked and replace it with respect. Mm -hmm. So when we, we come into a business discussion, um, you know, and we want them to respect us, that's a different energy. 
um, you know, and and if we consider that people buy, you know, not just what we sell, but who we are, um, we we pick up on the energy of people, and uh, and we we need to position ourselves today even more so as being that respected industry resource. And, and actually, and, Bernadette, as you say it, I can only really feel the shift myself in yeah. the thinking perspective. You know, and just yeah. thinking ahead of some telephone calls that I need to make and, and whatnot. And really, when you think of it, look, they need to respect me for me, who I am, what we do, my expertise, etc. cetera. Yeah. And it's much more powerful standing. You know, I can, I can feel prouder already thinking like that. And, and it is just the shift of a word. And, you know, it's this is where words have such power as well. Um, you know, some people will say, oh, yeah, but, you know, I'm just I'm just a salesperson or I'm just an account manager or I'm just a delivery person. You know, that word just, remove it. You know, I am I am a business person who sells something, you know, and, and to really change that word like and replace it with respect. And and it's seriously that you, and you do feel it. So, you know, anybody watching or listening to this, um, you will try it after this, after this and you will feel it yourself. So that that will enable you. Um, you know, there are no hard questions to ask. There are simply questions to ask. And and when you sit down and you, you look at the question and you think, okay, why am I asking? What is the purpose of this question? Where is it gonna lead me? And where is it gonna lead my client? What is that end service or idea? It's going to help them build their business and these are this is how. And it just puts some structure and some context around your thinking. Mm -hmm. um, so that whole need to be liked is a big, um, a big psychological um, sabotage strategy for so many people. Um, a second one is money. <laughs> you know, money is money is a big driver. Um, and it is money is such a big emotional blocker to to selling anything when you think about the fact that you know what is money you hold a you know a euro or you hold a dollar note or whatever it may be and it's simply metal or piece of paper it's the meaning that you put on that money that is the emotional part because we've all grown up and I don't know about you, but you know, I grew up in a <laughs> in a family with Irish <laughs> Irish background, <laughs> and the whole potato famine was part of it as well. So you know, I'm I'm one of forty five cousins on my dad's side of the family. So we're growing up in an environment that is was frugal, mm -hmm. and you know, um, all of us have grown up with the mantras like you know, money's the root of all evil, or you know, money doesn't grow on trees. Yes. Yeah, and, and peace, yeah. Yeah, and, and that's at a subconscious level, it's in us. And so, you know, um, I remember my dad, I think I might've been about 12 or 13, I was with my uncle and my dad, and, and I don't know what they were talking about, but I asked my uncle, I said, you know, Uncle Andrew, what do you get paid? And my dad called me across and he said, you never ask anybody what they get paid or who they vote for. And I eventually became a salesperson and, and that were the hardest, they were the hardest conversations I had was asking for budget and, you know, having those quantification conversations around money. Because deep down inside, there was a subconscious part of me that said, you're not supposed to ask, that's none of your business. So, you know, money um, is, is a big component of, you know, the psychology. And if you think $100 is a lot of money and you're selling something a solution that's you know a hundred thousand dollars then there's going to be a disconnect in your thinking because you're not going to feel comfortable selling that because of the value um difference and how can you get over that mindset or is there any yeah. kind of strategy yeah. to get around that so um a couple of different ways one is start to talk about money more so us women who come home and we bought a brand new pair of shoes and we happen to say oh got it on special <laughs> yeah um, <laughs> it is simply to start to talk about money at, at without putting any meaning or emotion on it we, you know not discounting things in our own mind 
Um, another way is to start to add an extra zero to what you think a lot of money is. So if you think $100 is a lot of money, start to put another zero on the end and start to get used to $1,000 being your, your lowest point. Um, and, and gradually, you know, changing um, your thinking that way. Or when you're in a negotiation, don't make assumptions that your buyer can't afford what you're selling because you think it's a lot of money. I think so that's, that's a big one from listening to, you know, many of our companies within our network and those that we, that we help and that we consult with is that, is that exact point, Bernadette? Absolutely. So, you know, I say, let the buyer say no. Let them say that's too much money. But don't you put them, you know, don't look at them through your filter. But first of all, many people won't even realize they have a filter. Mm -hmm. So it's, it's, you know, having that awareness uh, around what you believe um, money to be. Absolutely. And I think that's one that will resonate with a lot is that value. And, and straight away, when you said those things, you know, we do hold a lot subconsciously with regard to how we see money and how we value money, but acknowledging it and recognizing it and let the no come from, you know, your potential customer or client and not internally from you just assuming it is too expensive or assuming your customer can't afford it and discounting it ever before you're even asked. Absolutely. And that, that is, that is the trap. That is what I see happening so often, um, is, is the salesperson will immediately default, um, to a discount. Now, if you consider that your buyer also has these money beliefs as well, they are going to try to knock you down on price because that's their money beliefs coming out. Now, if you're going to fold and, and discount because of that, it's a race to the bottom. So the ability for you to be able to, here we go, this need for approval, push the ability for you to be able to push back in a really respectful, elegant way and hold your margin, that takes into account the money beliefs, but it also takes into account you, you know, getting over your need to be liked. So this is where, you know, psychology comes into it. You can teach somebody the scripts and you can, you know, teach them the how to till the cows come home. But if these underlying DNA factors aren't addressed, um, it's just kind of falling on deaf ears. And if you were to say to somebody, okay, what are the first steps maybe that somebody could take if, you know, in listening to this masterclass this morning, Bernadette, they say, yeah, do you know something? That's actually me. Um, you know, why do I discount when I shouldn't? Or why aren't I, don't I, am I like, confident enough you know, to ask for the higher price up front. What's maybe some of the first steps that somebody can take to overcome that? So um, I think first and foremost, you would, uh, I think the, um, the fact that if you're sitting there and you're listening to this and you sit there and think, oh gosh, this is resonating with me. I've never thought about it. But I think that that might fit into me. Let me have a look. What, what do I think money means? And there will be an emotional attachment to money. Um, you know, if I give somebody a hundred dollar note to hold and I'll say, you know, tell me what's coming up. What would you do with this? I'll buy a pair of shoes. I'll pay a bill. I'll go sh food shopping. Whatever they choose to do with that hundred dollar note is there's an emotion tied to it. So, you know, you, A, you've got to recognize that you have tied an emotion to it. And what is that emotion? Um, you know, it could be poverty. It could be wealth. Um, but you know, this comes back to, you know, your values again is if you want to make money because you don't want to be poor, then you're focusing on being poor. But if you want to make money so that you can be wealthy, then you will focus on being wealthy. So it comes back to what's the emotion you're putting behind it. And then I would, then I would have a conversation and I would say, okay, you've, you've now got that awareness let's have a look at how we can look at what you're selling and let's forget about us let's forget about what we're selling let's step inside the customer's world for a minute what is this going to do 
for the the customer what is it going to what is it going to add to their business and can we put a dollar figure a percentage growth can we tie some kind of metric to that and also what is it going to stop your customer what is a challenge or an issue that it's going to prevent your customer experiencing and let's kind of see if we can put some meaning around that so we're we're flipping it from us to our buyer and that's where we start to say wow i've never thought about it from that perspective what we're giving is we're actually giving what they're actually receiving a ton of value from us so it's really got nothing to do with the price tag absolutely and, and even in other ways that i'm saying you know you could be solving a really big pain point for them yeah that's price yeah. so it's having that mindset as well to really really value and your yeah and and that's where it comes back to um the psychology the fact that you know all of us will do anything to avoid some kind of a challenge or problem or pain then we will to you know achieve a goal like i would love to be able to get up religiously every morning and do a 5 km walk but the pain of getting out of my warm bed <laughs> is greater than you know losing weight <laughs> you know and that's the same as our clients you know the pain of you know um you know fix the 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 challenge that they we need to understand what their real pain points are before we go ahead and share the benefits of our product mhm so in other words another thing there is that what i'm hearing kind of is to ask the question before you go on the and your i don't say your your pitch or your, your your you know about your product or your your service but it's to to ask the right questions and there's nothing more powerful than a good question. Oh, that's exactly it. They don't care about what you sell. It, it, they don't care about what you sell. Um, you know, somebody else will sell what you're selling um or something, you know, they'll sell something similar to what you're selling. They don't care about that. They just want something fixed. Mhm. And, and we we've, we've got to be smart enough and ask the right questions and be brave enough to ask the right questions. And I think, you know, to sum it all up Bernadette, the huge most powerful thing for me is the fact that changing that mind shift that look, do you need to be liked and changing that to actually no, I just need to be respected. Yeah. And that brings with it a certain level of authority and straight away even in my own physiology I could feel myself nearly sitting taller and 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 yeah. and prouder, you know, in, in my chair going from that when I just think of a particular scenario that I, I that I can apply that to. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. And and you know we we go we go looking for all the answers outside, but we have so much inside us. Our resourcefulness is there. We've got the bravery, we've got the courage, we've got the intellect, we've got the voice. We can do it. The resilience. And another thing is that we wouldn't be in the roles of where we are unless we had all of that. So now it's time to be confident and to earn and to to get that respect, you know, that you de- that you deserve. But to be yeah. proud to stand over it as you said it's inside of us it just needs to come out absolutely absolutely i think that's an an absolute priceless lesson you know you've shared some great knowledge and just for those of you that are just tuning into this i am um, caught up with bernadette in part one of this series and what we talked about was how to sell remotely when nobody wants to see you so i think if you haven't already viewed that i'd encourage you strongly to go back and to to tune into part one of it and um, because we touched on some great um and some great ways to leverage off of you know who's in your network currently past present future who's stuck who's lost and i'm sure lots of sales opportunities will open up now that you're armed with the the psychology behind to make you more confident in your role but to understand your customer better as well bernadette it's been an absolute pleasure is there anything you'd like to leave our audience with this morning Oh look I just say you know lovely to, lovely to speak with you um you know it, it's it's wonderful Elaine I really appreciate you bringing me on um and look if anybody wants to connect with me connect with me on LinkedIn uh and uh yeah strike up a conversation I'm more than happy to continue the conversation online Absolutely and as you said it all starts with gaining respect so Bernadette thank you very much My pleasure thank you Elaine